Hey guys, The Wood Craftsman here, and I've got uh, quite a few questions here recently. Um, private messages and comments about wanting to know as far as how to wire a magnetic starter for an air compressor. Uh, somebody had commented that they had one that was the exact same one as the one I have here, and then someone else had said that they had gotten a compressor, but the magnetic starter was unhooked. So they wanted to know more about how to hook it up, including a low oil control. Um, so anyways, I'm going to go through a... Um, Kind of a, a wiring schematic on paper but at the same time I'm just going to explain to you a couple things that are going to make a compressor fire um, as far as run so standard air compressor is going to have a pressure switch that's automatic um, and if you have a heavy duty two stage um, five horse or greater they're going to have a magnetic starter um, if they don't have a magnetic starter they're typically going to have an overload built into the motor, um, typically with a reset button built into the conduit box here. Um, the only one I know that does not is the Quincy QT5. Um, in the package of the magnetic starter, they supposedly use a heavy-duty pressure switch that supposedly has a built-in overload. I'm not sure, but that one is sold without um, a magnetic starter and you do wire directly into a pressure switch. Something I don't recommend because the motor does need to have a an overload or thermal overload protection. Okay, so um, so pressure switch is an automatic and here's the magnetic starter and then the other switch that I have here I actually got from one of my subscribers uh, who has a YouTube channel as well is this overnight switch. This is kind of nice because you can Turn the air compressor on or off um, overnight or over a long weekend or whichever. Um, just a real simple um, switch that basically just breaks the circuit that controls the magnetic coil inside here, which I'll explain here very shortly. So the last option that some of the newer compressors are coming with now is they'll actually have a low oil control. Now this unit still has a uh, sight glass yet, but if I would have bought this you know, with a low oil control, the sight glass would be missing and there would actually be a control box here. And basically it's a switch and there's a, a rod with a float on it. And um, if the oil level's right, the, the float is lifted and the switch is closed, meaning that the compressor can start then whenever the pressure switch calls for, or I turn on the manual switch, uh, providing the pressure switch is already closed. Um, but this one does not have that. so. But like I said, at the minimum, you're going to have a pressure switch to control the magnetic starter. So um, I'm going to kind of go through that, and hopefully that'll uh, uh, answer some of the questions I've got. Um, electricity is not something I really want to give a lesson on, but hopefully I can give you some real basic information as far as how to follow the schematic. And I've kind of put together a real easy schematic as far as uh, um, how a basic compressor works with a magnetic starter. I've also included an overnight switch, and I've also included a low oil control. So with that being said, um, we're going to get right back into the uh, schematic of the wiring diagram. All right. And uh, I get quite a few questions just recently on the same subject um, on a video that I have uh, explaining the magnetic starter use on my... Uh, air compressor and um, a lot of people are wanting to know how to wire it well I'm going to kind of do my best explanation I possibly can um, this isn't necessarily a how-to video it's kind of give you some guidance in the right direction um, the specs may vary ever so slightly but the concept and the circuitry or the circuit pattern should be the same so with that being said, uh, if you want to try this on your own, I am not responsible for anything that may happen. Um, you know, if something doesn't work or whichever, it's not my responsibility. But I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I took some time to draw this schematic and something that hopefully almost anybody could read and understand. And I've tried labeling as well um, just to kind of get a better... Um, association for those of you who aren't very familiar with some of the wiring diagrams and this is actually a pretty simple diagram so hopefully I can walk you guys through it who've been having some questions okay so um, basically I'm going to do my best that I can to kind of walk you know walk you through this 
This is for a simple wiring schematic of a uh, single phase magnetic starter typically used on a two stage air compressor, five horsepower or greater. And um, a couple of the responses I've had in the video is one just uh, states they have a compressor or have a magnetic starter just the exact same model as I have. Another one uh, basically stating that um, the need to know how to wire up um, the pressure switch and a low oil control um, in their unit as well. So I've actually included the low oil control. Um, if you don't have a low oil control in your compressor, it wouldn't really matter because the way I'm going to explain it to here, um, it just basically acts as a switch to complete the circuit to the uh, coil. So let's go over some basic principles here. L1 and L2, these are the two hot lines coming from your circuit breaker panel. Now this is for a 240 volt, if I might add here. Um, actually, it's a 220 to 240 volt um, system. So each of these legs is going to be hot. Um, unlike a traditional um, power here in the U.S., Mexico, and Canada, um, on low voltage 120 or 110 to 120, you'd have a, a neutral and a hot. But in this case here, we have two hot, so they're both 110 to 120 volts each, and it may vary depending on your power supply. So, with that being said, L1 and L2 stands for your line. Now, this little um, line section I have here goes back over to the coil or the electromagnet. This is what actually makes the switch function. Um, this is typically it's spring loaded in the normally open position. Um, basically, normally open is also dictated as NO, normally open, and normally closed is NC. Okay. Um, so these here are the contacts that right now it's a normally open circuit. Once the coil is energized, this here will become a closed circuit, but its default position is open. This here, as I forgot to add, is an overload. Um, that overload will is basically sized uh, um, or adjusted to match the full load amps of your motor, um, including the service factor if you have an applied service factor. And then at the output of the um, contact or magnetic starter, we have T1 and T2. So L1 becomes T1 and L2 becomes T2. And then we go down into the motor, um, which is a separate wiring schematic, but it's, it's pretty simple. You, as long as you follow the schematics in the motor, it's pretty simple. But um, typically on a 5-horse motor, that's a single voltage, which is two, probably 208 to 240 volts. You'll have four wires, and they also make sure you want to have a ground. The biggest thing is you want to make sure you have a good ground, because if anything goes wrong, you don't want anything to become live, and you want to go straight to ground. All right, so right now the way this is, without the electro coil, if you were to take a screwdriver and push a designated spot on this contactor, you could energize the contactor and make the motor run. But the trick is, is to be able to make the coil uh, or the electromagnet do it for you. So essentially what we're doing here is we're taking power from line 1 and line 2 to actually feed the um, coil or the electromagnet. So we're going to start with um, line 1. Line 1 goes all the way down through a series of switches. Now let's talk real briefly about these switches. Every compressor is going to have a pressure switch. Some compressors will have an optional oil, uh, low oil cutoff switch or low oil control. And you may choose to add um, an auxiliary switch such as an overnight on and off. Every single one of these switches is considered to be a normally open switch, meaning its default position is open, meaning that the flow of electricity can't flow through it unless you close it or it's closed by the means of air pressure or the oil level being at the appropriate height. So every single one of these, you're going to feed a wire into one and out the other, back into one and out the other, so on and so forth. 
And the idea of that is, is basically right now, um, this compressor will not start because none of these switches are closed. In order for this compressor to start, you'd have to have your overnight switch, which is optional. You'd have to have that turned on. You have to make sure you have enough oil in your crankcase so that way your oil level switch is closed. And then you have to have a, a call for air. So that means your air pressure in your tank has to be below its cutoff point so that the pressure switch will close. Now there is one other uh, switch in here that's actually built into the um, magnetic starter and that is this overload. And this overload is a normally closed uh, switch meaning its default position is closed. The only time that this switch would ever open is if your motor became um, overloaded and was pulling too many amps. So <clears throat> now we basically we'll start here from uh, line one again. We got power from the hot side of line one. We're going down. We're going through these series of switches and we're going to one side of the coil. Now this is the electromagnet again. Okay. Now, right now, the electromagnet won't do anything because it's only got power to one side, and the way the the magnets or the coils uh, wound up, it, it's just it's basically dead. In order to make this electromagnet, we have to complete the circuit. So basically, it goes from the other side of the magnet, goes up through here, and uh, it goes into. Um, the top side of the overload providing that there's power there. Okay, I want to insert this comment here and I want to clarify this. I don't have this drawing uh, the schematic 100% drawn the way it actually works, but I just want you to be aware of that the way the schematic shows, it looks to be that you're actually be shorting out line 1 and line 2 because it looks to be that the coil is going back to the bottom of line 1. Keep in mind that the overload is actually a separate circuit that's actually part of the control voltage which we're robbing from line 1 and line 2. But the way it's drawn the schematic here, it actually looks like you're actually shorting out line 1 and line 2, but you're not. The actual overload is a separate device, and basically on the, the one that I have, it's a little uh, bimetal strip, and once it heats up, it loses contact and it opens the circuit. So you're not actually crossing line 1 and line 2 together, but it's kind of the way it looks in the drawing. I didn't realize it until I was actually getting ready to launch this video, and I was doing a preview of it, and I had noticed this, and... Uh, had to go back through my notes and actually look at the magnetic starter to confirm. So it is actually a separate device, so you're not crossing line one and line two together. Okay, um, and this power is brought back from line two. So it kind of went backwards here, but basically line two feeds power to the other side of the, the coil. And the way it does that is, is providing that the overload hasn't tripped, there's current going through here, electricity going through here. So the, there's basically, there's a fail-safe for the motor and there's a fail-safe for the compressor itself. Actually, a couple fail-safes for the compressor. The overload protects the motor, and then the pressure switch obviously shuts the compressor off when it reaches its designated um, pressure. Or if you have a low oil control into the pump, if the oil level drops, this will also open the circuit just like the pressure switch, and shut the compressor off as well. Um, it, I mean, it, it looks really complicated, but uh, in reality, it's, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you kind of have to look at it as, as just a flow, as a, as a forward flow or a one-direction flow. Um, and if you ever question what you're doing, two things... Number one, get yourself a cheap multimeter and send it, send it to continuity. That's the easiest way to test the circuit. If you're not sure of what you're doing, you can just basically start with one probe in one section, go to your question point and see if you've got continuity. Um, the other thing, too, to kind of you know, make sure you're aware of, every one of these uh, switches here should only be a two-pole. Now... I've never seen a low oil control, so that might actually have three wires. And typically, the third wire should be just be a ground because you want to make sure, obviously, that you know the compressor is grounded. So anytime you have a switch mounted to metal, it's not a bad idea to add ground, even though the entire 
compressor would be you know steel or cast iron you typically wouldn't need it but some of the newer equipment might actually have a ground wire with this low oil control and if that's the case you just want to make sure that you attach the ground wire to inside the box here someplace um, or if you have multiple ground wires like from your compressor motor and uh, you know maybe you got pressure switch grounded as well I believe I do in mine and um, you know if you got a grounded overnight switch for whatever reason you can tie all those grounds together and then ground it back to your circuit breaker box but that's kind of it in a nutshell um, I don't really know more as far as how much more to explain to it and you know unless I get more questions on this but um, it, it's pretty simple. It really looks daunting at first. I had a look at mine a few times and then I actually looked at the uh, diagram in the back of the cover, which didn't really explain it as well as, or didn't explain it quite like this here. It just basically just had a box drawing of the different terminals and everything. Um, the one thing I'm going to tell you is that this is kind of a sideways view. This isn't really a, a front view to be looking at. And the reason I say that is because this here is basically representing kind of a, um, a broken circuit with a, by means of a contactor. So you might have some different numbers for your coil, but those are typically going to be up here someplace behind the big lugs for your line one and line two power. There should be some terminals back there. And those would be um you know for the actual coil itself depending on the brand every brand's a little bit different um and you also have to watch to make sure and i can't explain enough on this because i don't actually uh, have one to show you but some compressors i think furnace or some uh, magnetic starters i believe the older furnace um contactors and magnetic starters they actually had a multi-voltage coil that you could actually just rearrange some jumpers and things like that to get um, a different voltage out of your coil this particular coil on, on my compressor um, it's configurable for three different voltages so um, just kind of something to kind of keep in mind um, but yeah this this is for a 220 to 240 volt magnetic starter with a 220 to 240 volt um, electromagnet or coil so just kind of keep that in mind um, and and the other thing too is uh, also keep in mind that when you buy a magnetic starter or, or you know even if it came with the compressor or whatever you're looking at there should be a wiring schematic um, inside the steel case someplace if it's actually in an OEM case um, it's typically a NEMA 1. There's going to be an actual wiring diagram along with a chart, typically for your um, overload sizing. They'll actually kind of go through this as well, but hopefully I've kind of explained this a little bit more simple um, for it because it's just a simple uh, circuit for um, a compressor. So let's just... Uh, Let's follow this through one more time here. So once again, L1 and L2, these are the two hot lines coming in from your circuit breaker. They're both uh, 110 to 120 volts each. And then this is your actual contactor. Right now it's open. And here is your overload. If you don't have an overload in your compressor, check to make sure if your electric motor has a reset button on it. Um, it's not too common on a heavy duty two stage compressor with a, with a 184 T frame motor or larger that's actually going to have its own built in thermal overload on the motor. You should actually have an overload of some sort, um, in by your magnetic starter or, or your contact as they also call this section right here. Um, if you don't, you do want to have some form of overload protection, which is kind of a separate video. But the reason being is a compressor motor has a pretty rough life. As the pressure in the tank increases, the amps in the motor increase. And uh, if, the, um, if you kind of built your own compressor, or if you had gotten one that was three-phase and converted to single-phase, and you don't have the motor sized correctly, um, or it didn't you know you didn't have a motor pull and you're guessing uh, if you're running the compressor too fast and the motor is not sized for it, it'll uh, pull excessive amps. And if it's not protected with some type of thermal overload, 
um, over a period of time, uh, those windings then get really hot. You'll burn the varnish off and you'll you'll short it out. Um, so it's not a not a pleasant smell, and uh, it's actually happened here in the shop with the old Canva house field that I had. I uh, worked the compressor really hard, the motor was really hot, and uh, uh, didn't necessarily trip the overload out, but uh, smoked the varnish off the windings, and it was a direct, uh, just a direct short, so, and it had a room filled with black smoke, it was kind of interesting, so, but, um, yeah, so let's walk through this one more time here, so we got line one and line two, they go down here, this is your actual contact or your um, electric coil switch which pulls us in and you have your overload. Line 1 becomes T1 and L2 becomes T2, goes straight into your motor. Okay, so as far as the actual coil itself, we're going from uh, line 1, taking power from line 1, and we are going all the way over to our switches. And each switch, um, it goes in one switch and out the other, um, or in one end, out the other through each switch. So think of think of a switch just like this here. You're gonna take the one wire. Now this is a single wire. You got one wire coming into the switch and you got one wire coming out the switch going into the next switch. And then the wire of that next switch comes out and goes into the next switch. So this is one wire. This is just a single line circuit right here. <clears throat> okay. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. So it goes to this series of switches. And it goes up to one side of this coil or the electromagnet. All right. Now to power the magnet, it's still somewhat of an open circuit because of how the... Um, coil is wound in this magnet we need to take power from the other side we need to get power again now because this has an overload in it it still needs a, a form to protect the motor so um, if this here were to open it would cut power to the magnet again and this would open so from the other side we are going um, from the other side of the magnet we're going up and over we are going down here to the um, input side of the overload and then we're coming back out and we're going back up to our line again. So essentially electricity would go around through here, come back down and come up <clears throat> through here. Um, that overload, like I said, if you don't have the actual overload, um, you know, it, it won't it won't work so basically this is another switch so this overheats it's going to break the circuit here and it's going to open back up again so right now this whole assembly here it's spring loaded to be normally open and then when it's energized a magnet pulls this assembly back pulling in um, the line 1 to T1 and pulling in line 2 to T2 to complete the circuit so and uh, as I mentioned earlier um, if any one of these switches is off or open, for example, if you have the overnight switch off, but your oil level's good and your pressure switch is below its set point for, for starting, it still won't start until you turn the overnight switch on. Same case B is if um, your pressure switch is, is closed, the, the, the pressure is dropped below its uh, start point, and your overnight switch is on, but your oil level is low, the compressor won't start again because the switch is open because the oil level is too low. And at the same time here, if, you're, if your overnight switch is on and your low oil control is um, closed because there's plenty of oil in the crankcase, but your compressor won't start um, because your pressure is high enough. So kind of keep that in mind. So hopefully that kind of explains it. Um, I mean, it's kind of as best as I can do with it. Um, you know, if you're really struggling with this, you might want to get somebody you know that's uh, um, well knowledge about electricity to kind of give you a, a really a, a hands-on versus a, a how-to video. Just for the simple reason, some of this stuff, when you actually look at it, can be daunting. And I will say that my box is a little bit more messier because I've got a couple other auxiliary items in there as well. Um, so, you know, kind of take this for what it's worth. Um, 
you know, I don't want to hear anybody tell me that I didn't do a good enough job in this because, quite frankly, this is not something I'm really comfortable in doing to begin with. But at the same time, I really try to help people as much as I can. And follow your instincts. Um, if if you think something's not right, you know, make sure you ask questions. Uh, you know, if you have friends or a local electrician or something, have them kind of give you a hand on this because this this is lethal. Um, if it's mistreated, it could be the last time you've ever touched it, and we don't want any of that. So, um, yeah, so hopefully this kind of helps you out. Um, you know, it, it's... It looks kind of daunting, but if you actually follow it, it actually makes sense. And now there are some other good videos on YouTube. And if I think of it, I'll try and put a, a um, put a link to the other video I saw. There was another guy um, on YouTube, um, channel named by Rotary Comptech. Um, he's put out a video as well as far as actually how to wire a magnetic starter for um, a compressor as well. It does not include the low oil switch, but basically the low oil switch is no different than a pressure switch or an overnight switch. They're all wired in series, meaning that if one is open, uh, it's still an open circuit. So, all right, guys, hopefully that answered um, the questions out there. Um, I apologize if it did not. I, like I said, I just really don't know more as far as how else to really explain it because it is something you either you kind of understand it or you don't. So, and electricity isn't for everybody. So, okay. So the one side note I wanted to point here is you might have a pressure switch that might have two separate sets of contacts, and if that's the case, you only need to use one side. Now I've got the compressor turned off here, but I'm still going to use a screwdriver just to show you. Basically, you have a, a contact here and a contact here. These are those open switches I was telling you about. Right now, electricity would be coming into one side, but it wouldn't go into the other side until this here was actually closed to complete the circuit because then electricity would run from one side to the other side back down again. So if you see that you have a pressure switch that has two sets of contacts in it, which is typically used for um, uh, a, pre a compressor that has a... Um, a smaller motor, um, typically it's got a 7-8 shaft or a 5-8 shaft, and it has an, an overload built into the motor. Um, and then they, are, they typically wouldn't be using a magnetic starter, so we wouldn't be having this conversation. But in this case here, I'm just using one side of the contactor. So you got to make sure that when you wire the pressure switch that you're using one set of contacts. Because if you put one of the two wires here and the other one over here, it's not going to work because um, you're not completing the circuit. Because essentially um, you got juice coming in here and coming out here. But if you don't have the wire here, you still have an open circuit. So I just wanted to uh, point it out to you. And as far as I mentioned grounding... I do have the pressure switch grounded as well. It's probably overkill, but the ground is there, so I just utilized it. So, all right. Okay, so I've taken time to actually open this box up as well, and I'm hoping not to confuse you because the drawing really tells more than what this does here because this gets a little bit confusing when you physically look at it. But basically, I've got the power turned off here, but these here, these two wires, the black one and this one, when you look at these two big terminals, this one and this one. This is L1 and L2. And then if you get down here, you got T1 and T2. But as I mentioned, it goes through an overload. Okay. So if I were to have this energized and push this in, the compressor would start. But the idea is, is that we want the compressor to do it by itself. And if you go back here, this is, uh, we have two um, terminals here for the actual the electromagnet that actually makes this uh, little guy go in and out automatically um, so as I mentioned earlier you know that's kind of where um, you know, I think my schematic called for a1 and a2 but it really um, can vary depending on the manufacturer but basically we've taken power from L2 kind of gone down here to the top side of the overload and we've come back out and we have gone in to the actual coil um, like I guess it is kind of hard to follow here that's why I wanted to do the paper drawing instead and then essentially this white wire goes to the other side of the coil which actually goes to this day and night switch 
and I also have the pressure switch tied into that. So um, that's why I didn't really use the, the box here itself to show that because it gets kind of confusing. Um, and then I've also got this auxiliary in here for the uh, cooling fan in the back. I don't know if I did a video on that or not. I know I, I had uh, worked on one. I don't know if I actually uploaded it or not, but I'll see if I can find it as well. Um, yeah, so this this is not really the best to look at. So, But I just wanted to show you that there are some variances. Um, this is a Simmons um, control. A square D looks a little bit different. Um, if you get some of the imported ones, they're even a little bit more different. So it's more so just about following the schematic. And hopefully the schematic that I gave you um, in the video here um, as I'm explaining it, will actually give you a little bit uh, better understanding um, looking at as far as how the actual flow works. So what I'll point out here as well is, um, as I mentioned, this here is the actual thermal overload. This is the button here that would pop out on the front of the compressor, on the front of the, the box here, that if it tripped, you'd have to push this and it would snap back in place. So this is the one wire going to the motor. This is uh, T1 and this is T2. Now T2 goes straight underneath the uh, bottom side of the contactor, but T1 goes to the overload first. There's only um, need for an overload for one phase. Three phase, you need three overloads. So, so here we got T2 and then we have uh, the ground. So that's this big cord right here that goes into the motor. Um, here's the, uh, let's see if I can, here's the Balder motor, um, rotation you have to figure out basically, but basically you just tie those two wires together to a line, so the line straight down is uh, T1 and the line straight down is T2, so basically, um, if you tie uh, number eight and number one to T1 and tie number five and number four to T2, it will run one direction. And if it's running in the wrong direction, you turn five and eight around. So then you uh, wire uh, tie fi number five and number one to T1, and then you tie number eight and four to T2. So... Um, yeah, but that, that's more of the simple. So just think of, oops, just think of this as T1 and T2. Doesn't matter which, which direction you are. So this is T1 and this is T2. So you're gonna, the motor wires gonna be number eight and one, you're gonna tie them to T1 of, of the wire coming in from the contactor, the T1, and this one here is going to be T2. So you're going to have three wires tied together. Two from the motor and one from the contactor for each one. All right. So hopefully that uh, answers your guys' uh, question on wiring um, uh, a magnetic starter with the pressure switch at least. Um, for you know, those of you guys who had the question, uh, I apologize if it's not as information as what you thought or what you wanted, but it's really kind of hard to uh, put together something uh, so that way everybody uh, understands that uh, electricity is one of the things that you just can't necessarily explain over a video all the time. Uh, some people will get it, some people won't. Uh, it's just, it's kind of a hands-on experience, but uh, at the same time, everything starts out in the diagram and then you work from there. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video and um, I hope it was helpful for those of you guys who are looking for it. So, and uh, I may have made an error um, in there and maybe somebody might point that out, but please don't, uh, don't lash me for it just for the simple reason that uh, this wasn't an intended video, but I've had a lot of requests for the video. So I tried to help out in any, any which way I can. And, um, if you follow everything correctly, and if you're ever in doubt, make sure that you um, contact somebody, whether it's a local electrician um, or somebody who knows about electricity, because you kind of have to follow the diagram. And like I said, the diagram on, on your magnetic starter might be different than mine, uh, but the concept is the same. So you need to close the circuit 
to the uh, magnetic coil. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Questions and positive comments are welcome. Thanks for watching.